If Donald Trump loses this November, what might happen on January 6, 2025? The Atlantic's Hannah Rosen has been trying to figure that out. In the latest episode of We Live Here Now, her podcast on the January 6 sympathizers who move next door, she speaks with Brandon Fellows, a, quote, mischievous goofball who went to the Capitol on January 6 and ultimately climbed through a window and into Senator Jeff Merkley's office where he put his feet up on a desk and smoked a joint. Fellows was eventually tried and convicted for obstruction of an official proceeding and various other misdemeanor offenses. He was sentenced to 42 months in a D.C. prison, joining the, quote, Patriots pod. When he got out, he was no longer a, quote, mischievous goofball, but something harder and more resolved. Like, how long are you going to stay in D.C.? Like, I, is this, do you have a plan here? Yeah, I plan to stay till like January 7th. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was my kind of plan. That, um, that feels vaguely threatening. Uh, I could see why you would say that, mm -hmm. um, especially considering, um, you know, my feelings. About violence. Well, about how, man, I wish after seeing all the chaos that's happened in the world and the, to the country, how I wish people did more on January 6th instead mm -hmm. of like me taking selfies and just smiling. Mm -hmm. I think it would have been better off if people actually would have mm -hmm. actually been there for like more people would have actually been there for an insurrection. Joining us now, senior editor at The Atlantic and host of Radio Atlantic, Hannah Rosen. Hannah, um, this episode was really was it was tough. This kid, he's 30 years old now, so he's not so much a kid, but he went into uh, prison as, you know, just a guy who happened on the Capitol, didn't really, I think, didn't fully understand the extent of what he was getting himself into, but he came out yeah. different. So ex explain the change. Well, explain what happened inside the D.C. prison. Yeah, you have to understand what the Patriot pot is for various reasons. All of the January 6ers who were being detained were detained in a segregated unit. So think about that for a minute. They were detained together. So that includes people who were members of militias, people who, who did actual violence that day, people who came to the Capitol with a gun, and people like Brandon Fellows who, you know, were just there to be curious, were goofballs, whatever reason they showed up there that day. And all of a sudden, a hierarchy started to develop where Brandon, for example, started to think of those guys, the guys who, as he put it, did something on January 6th as the real heroes and himself is lacking. He essentially started to look up to them. And so that's a dynamic that I think we've been more or less unaware of, but that's been building and building over the last three years in the D.C. jail. So he was radicalized. Radicalized. That's that's the simple word for for what I just said. Yes. So he was when radicalized. he tells you that he's ready to stay until January 6th um, or January 7th, the day after January 6th, why, why do you take that as vaguely threatening? Because he's already explained to me what he believes, which is that and Donald Trump says it, too. If Donald Trump is not elected president, the only reason can be because Democrats cheat like hell. I mean, Donald Trump has said it himself. So they are essentially ready, a lot of the former January Sixers, for another cheat. And I think if Donald Trump loses, they'll just assume, OK, we can't take it anymore. We've got to do for real what we didn't quite accomplish the first time. I think that's the thinking of a lot of people, because it's not as if in these four years they've come to see the light, that they were wrong. Oh, I misunderstood what happened in the election. The big lie is not really a big lie. I mean, you hear it yourself and how Donald Trump talks in this election. It's, he's doubled down. And therefore, a lot of people who believe in him have doubled down. And it's become what you said earlier in the show, an echo chamber. And that's how it's rolled out. When you were talking to him, you, you said, what if President Biden does legitimately, or in this case, Kamala Harris does legitimately win, as President Biden legitimately won in, in 2020? And he says, he seems to just kind of disregard that. Doesn't matter. I'm going to play a little bit yes. more. Um, him talking about um, about Trump getting in and, and calling it a nice band aid. Let's listen. I hope that it doesn't come to this. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd be nice if Trump just got in, and if he just does what he did before, that'll be a nice band aid. We need some a little bit more intense, and I'm hoping he goes a little bit more intense. But there's just a possibility that he will legitimately lose this election. Like at the ballot box. Yeah. 
I just, I think at that point, you know, uh, people might have to do something. People might have to do something. What is that something? I mean, I, I go further into it and I note that there is, he has a fight at some point, this Brandon Fellows does in DC. And I note the thin line between words and violence. It's of course always hard to predict what's going to happen. And nobody ever says, oh, I am going to commit a felony on the Capitol on January 6, 2025. But a lot of people imply that that's what they're going to do if Donald Trump is not elected president. Um, and like I said, I think Donald Trump once again encourages them. So I can't tell you exactly what do something means, but I can tell you that he says things like, if it's my time to die, it's my time to die. So so, so you have to read between the lines. It's a wild thing for a 30-year-old to be saying, if it's my time to die. What, what could you be talking about as a 30-year-old about dying? What cause could you be taking up? I think we can all kind of guess. Um, yeah. I mean, he talks about the span of history and why sometimes you need to shed blood for the good of America. I mean, he does talk in those terms. You know, we needed a civil war. We needed to shed blood. Yeah. And, and he says, yeah, the civil war was better in the long run, even though it shed a lot of blood in, in the in the immediate. But I wonder, does he believe in or do these folks like him, do they believe in the Constitution? I mean, if Donald Trump legitimately loses and he says people need to do something, how do you square that with believing in democracy and believing in this country? An excellent question that I, my editors had. So I called him up one day and I said, hey, do you believe in democracy? <laughs> do you believe in elections? Like, do you believe in the things that are in the American Constitution? And what he said to me was, remember how there were protesters at the Republican National Convention who held up a sign that said dictator on day one? I would be okay with that. So I think there's just this belief that whatever the problem, Donald Trump is the savior. And I've, I've heard Donald Trump say things like that. So, I yeah. mean, you're, you're smiling because I think there's just some frustration. <laughs> like, no matter how you try and penetrate, hey, we all live in this country. We have a constitution. This is a democracy. There are rules. Yeah. People will slink around that. It, it's true. And it just reminds me of a conversation I had um, in the lead up to the election in, in 2020. I was in Pennsylvania and I, I asked, because Donald Trump was going around and saying that the only way that he could lose was if there was fraud. Same thing he's saying now. And I, I asked a guy um, what he would do if he legitimately thought democracy was being stolen from him, as Donald Trump was telling him to believe if he lost. And the guy said he would take up arms. He would take up arms. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if he went to the Capitol that day. He wouldn't give me his name. So I couldn't track him. But, you know, people did go to the Capitol on January 6th. Yeah. So sometimes you got to take people at their word. Hannah yeah. Rosen, I got to go. Thank you very much for joining us. It's Thank a great you. listen. Thanks. We live here now on the Atlantic.